Tennille, your cloth nappy doctor. I'm playing with a wool soaker, wool cover, wool soaker here. Uh, so this is our monthly AMA. Um, so within the group, the cloth nappy doctor chats group, we always have a topic for the month. And this month is wool covers. So we've been chatting lots about wool covers and how to analyze them. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, why they're awesome, why they're good. We share blogs, we share information, we share our trials and tribulations and successes. Um, so it's all about wool covers, plus everything else, cloth nappy and living eco-friendly and the rest of it. So looking at wool covers. So I usually know things you guys don't. <laughs> and there are a couple of brands that are discontinuing their wool covers. I don't know why, it's usually a cost factor. So they're discontinuing. So soon there's going to be a shrinkage in wool covers available for you guys. So um, that sort of encouraged me to start making the Apicali once again. Um, and also I got a bit tired of making clothes for myself, knitting. So I'm back to making um, wool covers for Apicali. I've just started. And I thought I'd show you what they look like before they're the finished product. So. This is a, a, a pattern you can find on the web. It's free, but we have actually, I, I have changed the pattern to be nice and big in the bum. And this is what it looks like before it's sewn up to be a actual wool cover. So I don't knit mine in the round. I knit mine flat, straight down. So those who knit will understand what I'm saying. But at the end, that's what it looks like. So I'm going to show you some different types of wool soakers. So this is a hand-knitted wool soaker. And I love the purple and the little specks of white in it. I really like this colour. Anyway, alrighty, so that's what it looks like before it's sewn up. And some of the ones I'll show you have the same sort of uh, shape um, on the flat. And then it's sewn up. Some are knitted in the, round, in the rounds. When it's knitted in the round, you don't, don't get seams at the front. It doesn't matter which is which. So this is a wool one. Okay, handmade, so if you can get your mum or your nana or if you knit, great way to get yourself some wool soakers. We have found these work as well as the ones I'll show you that we sell. So if you don't knit or you don't know someone who knits, you can buy them. Alrighty. So these are coming back slowly but surely. Um, wool soakers you can also get. So there's the Eco Posh ones. These only come in brown. Okay, they have a bit of a longer leg compared to some other wool covers and a nice wide band up top here. So you can see where it's been seamed. So this one is sewn on a machine in the flat and then it's hemmed up through here. The hemming doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean you're going to get leaks. It's just where it goes. It's just hemmed together. That's usually flat. Now there's two layers of wool in the, can I show you that? Yeah, uh, in the Eco Posh. These ones are being discontinued and they come in two sizes. So there's a size one and a size two newborn and they're designed to go over their fitted nappy. So they're the Eco Posh and they only come in brown. Um, a lot of wool soakers you will find will have a high band at the top. You can fold these over. So some parents are a bit concerned that, oh, it goes like right up under their armpits. <laughs> so especially in the two size option, you can fold it over. And that's fine. And if you find the legs are a bit long, so this is their size one. You can see how it'll be quite big on a newborn. You can fold the legs up and make cuffs. Nice and stretchy. Okay. All right. So they're the Eco Posh. If you have any questions, pop them up. Um, I will attend to the comments as we go, which seem to have disappeared. Why does it do it to me? Anyway, I'll keep going. If I miss saying hello, I'm sorry. Okay, imagine <clears throat> are some wool soakers. These ones are also being discontinued. They're not doing them anymore. These ones are also knitted in the flat, but the hem is a little bit, the join is a little bit wider across <clears throat> compared to the Eco Posh. Again, they've got two layers of wool, but it's a thinner wool. So the, the machine made ones can do a, like a three, four ply. Your hand knitted ones are usually an eight or 10 ply. And just the thickness of the thread that they're using and they usually use two layers. Um, these ones you can't really fold the legs up. They're a bit shorter compared to the Eco Posh. 
These ones come in three sizes, but you can fold the band over. Okay, and these come in a couple of different colours, green, blue, yellow, pink and white. Whatever I've been able to get my hands on for you. Alrighty. And lastly, uh, the baby beehives. Now these are different, these are a wool, brain's dropped it. It's not knitted, it's a wool felted, stretchy material. I've, I've dropped what it's called. I will put it up. Okay, so it's just a stretch. They're very, very stretchy. All right. Again, you can't fold the bands up on the legs. Okay, but they're nice and thick or yet thick to help prevent any leakage. And the band you could fold over if you find it's a bit high in the rice. So they're the baby behinds ones. They come in three sizes. Um, generally, the medium and the large are always in stock. The small all depends. Okay. Okay. These are fabulous over your um, fitted nappies, your flats as well, if you're using them with a snappy, or your pre-folds. If you want a natural cover, really fabulous, okay? Um, majority of the wool covers are a pull-up. Um, they're not a snap-on or a Velcro. Um, a brand used to do a Velcro, which was really fabulous. It's really hard to get the, the um, snap or Velcro. I have seen some patterns which use buttons, so you can put it on like a PUL cover, um, but they're not generally available from the bigger brands. So there's your wool covers. I'm going to go see if I can get the comments up to make sure I'm not missing anything really important. Now, we had, when this went up, the event, a lot of people were wondering, but shared a lot of questions because wool covers are a bit mis mysterious, um, which they're not. They're really easy. Once you use them, you just go, ah, why didn't I do it? It's like cloth wipes. Why didn't I do it before? Alrighty. So how many do you need? You need two to three. That's all you need. You need to rotate two one each day um, so you can let it dry. If you use it every day, you want to, because if, if you use it and Bub does some big, big wees, you want to be able to rotate and let it dry thoroughly each day. Because they're lanolized, um, the way the wee and the lan lanolin interact, it sort of neutralizes the smell and it repels the wee back into the nappy. If you find they start smelling, and you know the smell, just a bit wee, that ammonia smell, they need to be washed. If you need two or three, let them dry. If they smell at the end of the day and you've dried them, that 24 hours, they need to be washed. Okay? They need to be washed if they're soiled. So if Bub does a poo on them, there's no way you can wipe it clean like PUL PUL cover because of all those fibres and little holes and the way it's sewn. You need to wash, you need to give it a wash. Um, some wool covers are machine washable. Check your tags, check the wool. Um, some are hand washed, okay? We generally recommend hand washing. It's not onerous to hand wash them, just dunk them in, give them a little bit of a um, squeezing. Um, not onerous to hand wash at all. Uh, need two to three, two to three in rotation. How often do you wash them? Do you actually need to wash them? If you've got a good bub who doesn't um, pop all the time, um, usually every two to four weeks. Two to four weeks you need to give them a wash um, and re lanolize them. Sometimes you can get a bit longer. You just It's a bit of a give it a whiff. If, you start, if they start, don't, they're not holding the, pushing the wee back in, you're getting dampness in spots, then they need to be re lanolized as you use them often and get used to doing the lanolizing, you um, get up the practice and the confidence as to what needs to occur. All right, I'm going to have a look at comments to make sure I'm not missing anyone. Now, no, there's no comments. Nobody said, nobody said hello. That's okay. All righty. So I'm really annoyed the comments are not up. I don't know why. Sorry guys, technology. Is that one? No, it's weird. 
Anyway, alrighty, so you need two to four to rotate. You wash them every two to four weeks, depending on the smell, and you relanalyze them every three to four weeks. Now, lanalyzing, that's usually the really big question. There are two ways to lanalyze, and we stock sheepish grins. How worried? Um, you can get liquid lanolin. So lanolizing, you usually hear about using the lacino, lacino that you use for your um, nursing, breastfeeding for your nipples, um, and then squeezing a pea-sized amount of that in some um, hot water, and then mixing that in with some warm water and putting your um, cover in and letting that absorb for about half an hour until the water's lukewarm. Hi, Amy. Oh, Amy, you need to get another wool cover. They're really good. So usually you have your lacino, that's the one they use, or a solid lanolin. This is the normal way that you'll see um, uh, on blogs. So we've got a blog on how to do it this way. You add about a pea-sized amount, one cent coin. I'm showing my age there now. I was around when they still had the one and two cents. A um, little bit in a litre of water, hot water, let it dissolve. It should go um, a bit milky, okay? Then you put it into your um, warm water in a bucket, a large bucket of three to four litres with your one wool soaker at a time per pea size one cent coin of solid lanolin, one soaker at a time, and I'll explain why in a minute. You let it soak for about half an hour. Make sure the whole thing is wet. Put it in. There is a video on our Pakali on how to do it <laughs> on the YouTube channel. Okay, make sure the whole thing's wet. Okay, you'll see it. There'll be, it'll be a darker color all over. So make sure it is darker in color. Let it absorb all that lanolin and it'll stick to it. And then you give it a little bit of a rinse under warm water. Don't try and clean it, but just give it a little rinse. Um, when you are finished doing that, don't wring it like this. Never ever do that. You just, up against the edge of the bucket, you give it a push and a squeeze and then just change it and a push and a squeeze. Because if you do too much agitation of the wool fibers, it's going to felt. And that's where you start losing all these lovely lines and the, it not as well going to stretch. So we see that on all wool covers, including the baby behinds. The wool is just going to lock onto each other because wool has little scales on it and they're going to lock onto each other and not be able to come apart. And that's why you get the felting by too much agitation. So if you put it through your washing machine or accidentally your dryer for some reason and it comes out as a little bit smaller <laughs> or it's been, it's not as clear with the rows of knitting, it's been slightly felted. You can't go backwards. You can't go back and unfelt it. You've changed the structure of the fiber. So it's too much agitation. So if you find you're getting felting and you're washing them in the machine, it's possible that wool, that wool being used is not machine washable. All right, so I'll talk about what's available from Sheepish Greens. So you've got your solid lanolin, Okay, and you got your wool wash bar. Now, these wool wash bars from Sheepish Greens uh, already have lanolin in them. So when you wash your cover with these, you're already starting the lanolizing process. So some warm, uh, slightly warmer than lukewarm water, rub this on the cover. You can grate some in if you prefer to do that and melt it. You don't need a lot. Put this on, enough to get some bubbles and wash your cover, get your bits off, okay? Then you can take your cover straight, and when you've done your solid lanolin mix, put this in to soak, and you're off and running. Now, that's for those who are pretty confident, you're gonna give it a go. Is that upside down? It is. They come in really nice scents. There's vanilla, baby powder. I like this one. All right, if you're not overly sure about lanolizing your wool covers, but you want to give it a go. They also do an option that is less, not guesswork. They tell you exactly what to do. So they've got this creamy foaming wool wash. Um, you use a warm water, uh, gently shake to mix all the lanolin up. And then you put some into your 
warm water. Don't use hot water because the heat will also cause agitation, which will cause that felting. So it's always a, just a little bit more than lukewarm, I suppose. I suppose the temperature of your shower should be. Um, and then just let, gently work it, gently work it in. Same as your, this one. It's just that it's in a foaming, you don't have to guess. Let's say two pumps. That's what I've used. About two pumps per wool soaker. You, this is per wool soaker. Um, I'll talk about when you try and do more and what happens. About two pumps, maybe three, in, the, in just a, I think it's about a five to ten litre bucket. You know the normal size bucket you have in the laundry. All right, I'll be glowing warm water. Give it a squeeze, not this ringing and scrubbing like you would a shirt. Think of it a bit like uh, um, satin. You don't want to do that rubbing. Okay, um, and then they also have their liquid lanolin, and you usually add one or two teaspoons to your bucket of warm water, let it soak for about half an hour, wring them out, and then roll them up in a towel. So usually you'll have a towel, lay the soaker flat, and then roll it to get the water moisture out. Don't be over wringing it. You can do that squashing that I talked about. To get excess moisture out and then put it on the towel. Okay, ask questions guys, I want it to be simple for you. It's really not, it's not difficult once you get the system. So you've got two options, I'll, go through, I'll just go through it again. You've got two options, you've got the easy getting started, foaming wool wash, two to three pumps per bucket, per wool soaker, you might get it too. And then your next bucket has got your liquid lanolin in it. Then you put it in, let it soak. Mix it up, done. Roll it in a towel. If you're extra confident, some wool soak, which has lanolin in it, you're already starting lanolizing process. And then your solid lanolin, pea size, teaspoon. You can... It's a little bit of judging depending on the size of your bucket, how much water and the wool soaker you got. It's a little bit. Better off going a little bit under than over. Okay. What should it feel like when it has been lanolized? You will know you've used too much lanolin when it comes out of the tub because <laughs> it will be sticky. It should not be sticky. If it's sticky, you've used too much lanolin. Give it a wash and repeat the process is the best way to deal with it. Give it a little bit of a wash and some of that lanolin will come out. Maybe one wash and you may not need to lanolize it. All right. Should have a slight, hmm, what's the word? What does Trudy call it? Trudy calls it a, a bit of a, um, I wrote it down, a bit of a squeaky. Should be a slight squeaky sound to it. I know it's really scientific. Shouldn't be sticky. It shouldn't feel like wet wool. It should feel a oh, it's getting really scientific. I'm trying to think what it feels like. It's got a layer of a nice hand cream on it. You know when you put your hand cream on, <laughs> um, and it's passed and it's been absorbed, but you can, but it's not sticky anymore. But you can feel that there's you got hand cream on. Yeah, there's a slight smoothness and a bit of a squeaky to it. That's it. I know it's not very um, scientific and it's not um, black or white. Now, the idea to do one cover at a time when you're doing your wool covers, because you'll find when you're using them, you'll use one and then you'll get the one ready, lanolized, ready to go. And then while well, that one's being used, you'll always have two lanolized, one or two ready, lanolized and ready to go. You're never washing three of these at the same time um, unless you've just bought them or Bob has been prolific with their number twos. <laughs> All right, so um, oh, what was I saying? Lost it. See, it never goes. Once you've had kids, you still have mummy brain. You still have mummy's brains. Felting, how often to wash, how often to analyze. It will come back to me. Oh, yes, you can put clothes over the top, Elise. 
Absolutely. No, the clothes should not become damp. So that was a question we had, if that was you were asked it. Thanks for the prompt. That's great. Um, you can, yeah, put them over the clothes. Now, if the wool is damp and therefore the clothes are damp, the problem is either it's not fully lanolized. Oh, I was talking about the feel of it. Yes. Okay. Um, it's not fully lanolized. Oh, I was talking about why you don't do more than one. Okay. Oh, but I'll answer this question. It's a big topic. Um, you're not, you haven't fully lanolized it and there's damp. Maybe the lanolin hasn't gone over the whole cover. And then if we've got damp patches, if you've got funny damp patches in funny spots, just say it's not fully damp here. It's not fully lanolized or you need more absorbency. Okay, so remember even PUL, if you don't have the absorbency, it will it will leak through your PUL. PUL isn't a bucket um, that can hold water, it will come through. So you need more absorbency. And usually sometimes the easiest way is just to add a trifold booster to the outside of your already night nappy. Alrighty. So, um, lanolizing them. You never do two in a row using the same mixture. Um, because these have lanolin in them. So when you wash them, you may be able to with the washing, just know that the second one that goes through will have less lanolin when you're doing the washing part, okay? You might just need to add a little bit more. You could do that. As long as the water is still warm. As long as the water is still warm, you can add some more of these. But if you um, double this to try and do two, in that initial bucket of water, your first one is going to have too much lanolin, too much soap in it, and then you've got more work to do. Because the wool is absorbent, so it's gonna suck it up. It's gonna suck up your lanolin, it's gonna suck up your soap, and then you're gonna have too much on here. And then you've got more work, and then you've gotta rewash it without the washing stuff. So do one at a time. When it comes to the lanolin, some people think, oh, I've got two covers to do. I'll add double the amount of solid lanolin. So a large pea size or teaspoon. All right. If you add two lots to your bucket, um, this wool soaker is going to absorb heaps of that lanolin. You're probably going to get sticky spots not going to dissolve properly. You're going to get sticky spots because it's got nowhere the lanolin to go and it can't dissolve properly and get dispersed through the water. You're going to get sticky spots or the whole thing's going to be really sticky and then when you do your second one, this one's absorbed all the lanolin and nothing's going to end up on your second one. So that's why you do it one at a time. So you can always, if you buy two or three, just do one and then maybe if you can't be bothered, do the next lot the next day <laughs> or just do it in a sequence. It, um, the, I like the process of lanolizing because it's a little bit of squeezing. I like the textile of doing it, um, squeezing it out and then rolling it up. And it's just a period of doing a little bit of work and then waiting, have a cup of tea. It's very natural. <laughs> um, so that's what I love about, one of the reasons I love wall covers. They're also absorbent. So then when you lanolize them, you're making them uh, water resistant, um, like sheep. So if you watch sheep in the shield, um, they all, the water comes off. Lee says, I'm dying to knit some longies. Oh, you asked all these. I will um, chat about the longies. Um, so the lanolin repels water. Okay, so you've all seen lanolin and different things. It helps repel the water. And the wool itself is absorbent. Okay, so these are a little bit more absorbent and help repel water. Some people use wool covers over their PUL um, outside um, cloth nappies. That is an option for an extra added layer of um, protection and absorbency. But if you're getting dampness on clothes, if you're getting leakage, it's one of two things. It's your lanolizing process isn't perfect or you haven't got enough absorbency in the nappy. And both of those are easy to solve. You come and have a chat to us in the Cloth Nappy Doctors Chats group, or you pop us an email and we help you troubleshoot. Alrighty. Now, longies. Now, longies are basically a wool cover with long legs. They're a pair of pants. They're really cute. I love them. 
Um, you don't need to learn Eliza the legs. However, it's going to be interesting in how you're going to do that in the bucket and trying to keep the legs <laughs> hanging over the edge while you try and clean the whole, do the whole thing. Um, if you do do the legs, you can go further down, which adds a bit more um, water resistance to it. So you don't have to do the legs. So you're looking just at upper thigh is what you need to be lanolized. So if you can do it, if they are longies and not shorties, they are long, um, you can just do it three quarters up the leg. Don't do that, that, that bottom three quarters. Do that top, three, top quarter is the best way to do it. Alrighty. Um, you can, we also um, sell, because some people are allergic to wool or don't like the fill, um, we also do alpaca soakers. Now, these don't need to be lanolized um, because the wool structure of an alpaca is different to a sheep. It's a hollow tube, so these aren't absorbent. They act like fleece covers. So if you're wanting a natural option like wool, um, you can use these. So these just go on and off. You wash them the same gently. Don't over um, agitate them because you will get felting. Uh, yeah, and if you get any dampness on the outside, it means bulbs just gone or you haven't got enough absorbency in the nappy. So this acts to repel liquid back into the nappy is what alpaca wool soakers do. So that's why we have them there. Yeah, alrighty. Um, what else can I tell you? I think that's it. That's pretty clear and easy, I think. Alrighty. Do you want me to go over anything else? I can. Um, it's really quite easy. So we got because it's our topic of the month. We've got fifteen percent off wool covers, and we've got ten percent off the lanolizing. So if you were looking at getting yourself a wool cover or knitting one, that's good. So you can choose. Am I a little bit oh, not sure about this? You can get the already prepared lanolizing option, or if you're confident, you go. I'm, I'm committed to this. I'm going to get it done. You can get the confident option. And once you've got it, you can convert to these because these are more economical um, than those other options, save for convenience. And a really great option is um, why you're to get the lanolizing to ex extend the life of the lanolizing in between lanolizing treatments, you can add a lanolizing spray that you just spray on your wool soaker on the inside and the outside, a couple of sprays. Um, and you can get the lanolin to last a little bit longer. So it's really, it's not hard. It's really not hard. It's, it's really fabulous. You can, um, in the European countries, um, when I was talking to um, one of the brands who is from that area, saying they don't lanolize their daytime wool covers. Wool covers are like normal in those um, northern European countries, um, Switzerland and uh, Norway up there. They're normal. We're just a bit, I don't know, I think because we're so warm. Um, oh, they're breathable, so you can use them in summer as well. So you can use them during the day and don't lanolize them. Um, I've done that with my boys. You don't need to lanolize them because you're there, so you're going to tell when they've done a wee. As long as you've got your absorbency right in your nappy, you go, oh, it's a bit, you know, you feel that, oh, it's a bit damp, it's a bit warm. Okay. It's time to change the nappy, grab another wool cover and rotate them throughout the day. So you can just you can just live on wool covers. They're not just for nighttime use. Um, and then lanolize them for nighttime because you need that extended period. Uh, yeah. They're great. They're really good. They're not they're not hard. Once you get the lanolizing, it's easy. And it, it just being open to just the process of doing it. So we've got some blogs on the Cloth Nappy Doctor blog on lanolizing wool covers. I'll pop them up down the bottom. Um, there's a couple of videos as well, and I'll pop them up down the bottom as well. Um, seriously, it's not hard. They're really fabulous. They're really good. Alrighty. That's the AMA for, what are we in May now? All right, it's AMA. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, we've got a competition. It ends tomorrow to win a funky fluff in the print called That's a Wrap. So that's pinned to the top of the Akakali page if you want to go enter that one. 
And we've got a Mother's Day competition coming up after that. Because it's Mother's Day on Sunday. That's it. So come join us in the group, Cloth Nappy Doctor Chats group. Uh, go check out the blog and check out the YouTube channel because there's um, lots of videos. We've nearly reached 50,000 views on the videos. It's a bit exciting. Alrighty, guys. If you have any questions, pop them up during the day. I'll pop in and out and I'll assist where you can. If you have a more specific question that you want some um, the community to help answer, pop into the Cloth Nappy Docs Chats group. Um, if you have something a bit more private or you want one-on-one, -on -one, pop us an email. Um, we can help you there too. I, I will have a lovely Wednesday. I am scattered brain today. I was up early. Four kids. Four kids. You know what it's like. Hi, Elise. Thank you. I hope that helped. Sorry, it was a little bit. We're all mums. <laughs> well, covers would matter if they... Yes, you can crochet them, Amy. Absolutely. If you can crochet, I am in awe. It is not a skill I can learn. I have tried so many times because I want to make tops and also I can't, I just can't crochet. I've got a friend who can and she can't really knit. She has trouble with knitting. Anyway, anyway but I'll, I'll let you know how this is going. When I've done it up, I'll pop a picture up of it all put together nicely. Alrighty, guys. Have a beautiful Wednesday. I'll chat to you about more covers. Oh! It is so, so easy, Amy. It is. I think people get scared. Um, but you got lots of help. Lots of help. Alrighty. Bye.